TV News. Presented by the BC TV Summer Camp News Collectors. I'm Will Houston and this is my co-anchor, Skylar Fitch. Our first story today is about the future of the Brooks House. Due to the unfortunate events of April 17, 2011, when a fire ripped through the landmark building, leaving it an empty shell. Now, there are new owners who say work will commence shortly, and within a year's time, downtown Bible will have, new, will have two new colleges and a space for a number of shops and businesses. Now, to our reporter, Lily, who has more on the story. So, what are you going to do with the Brooks House? Uh, we're going to rebuild it. We're going to uh, start from scratch and, and clean it all out and, and make it like new. And um, we're gonna, it's going to take us about a year to do that, so there's going to be a lot of people helping us. It's going to be what, what we call a, a mixed building, so it'll have um, housing in the top. There'll be uh, actually some really nice apartments up on the top, the penthouse, where people have like decks on the roof and, and they're up really high. Um, and then there's a college coming in, two colleges, uh, CCV and Vermont Technical College are going to take the second floor. Um, there's another office on the second floor. Um, and then on the first floor is going to be a combination of restaurants and retail stores um, and, you know, bookstores and things like that. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Sure, thank you. My pleasure. We'll have coverage of, the, of Brook House's groundbreaking ceremony in next week's newscast. Our next story is about the projected upgrades in police and fire. Apartment buildings. The $14 million project has been approved and architects will soon be chosen by the Radebro Select Board. This week our news team looks at the current state of the police station. Police officers are a very unique job where you really aren't off all the time. You know, you may go home, but you very well may get a call in a couple hours to ask you for you to come back in to help out. This is the sergeant's office. Right here is Lieutenant Evans. He's our second shift supervisor. And here's Sergeant Mark Kerrigan. He's our first shift uh, supervisor. Hello. This is our, where we get our fingerprints and we take pictures. We have five cells that we'll put them at, and the cells are over here. How long do people usually stay here? 48 hours. Uh, if they want to stay longer, we have to call and get a judge's permission to extend it but the longest they can stay in here by law is 72 hours. We're back. A fascinating look at the Brat PD while exploring the Brattleboro Fire Department during next week's newscast. We'll have extended coverage of our police faculty tour in a separate program coming soon. We will be right back after this short break. Has this ever happened to you? This corner was sacked. Then come on down to Bradwell Community Television Stores for all of your camera needing needs. You can videotape your friends, your enemies, even your friends' enemies, or your enemies' friends. Just talk to all of our satisfied customers! Well, it's really good for videotaping shadow puppets, like this is the duck, and this is the crocodile, and this is the chicken. I love filming my goldfish Reggie. I mean, he just swims around in circles and circles, and it's just so amazing. I just want to be able to share that with you. I like to use this camera to take videos of my sister at embarrassing moments and then show it to her boyfriend. Our cameras have been used to make all of these great films. Time Travel Trio, Dash, Double Trouble, Midsummer's Nightmare, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Ninja Turtles, Harry Potter, Snakes on a Plane, Jaws, Teletubbies, and more. Order now and you'll get this assorted duct tape. Order five minutes and you go and you'll get this color coded remote. Not suitable for children, seniors, or normal adults. Order today. I ordered this camera five minutes before I saw the commercial and got all this stuff as well. Radbro's local hardware store, Brian Roberts, has a new owner. For more on the story, down to our reporters on Main Street. Earlier this week, it was confirmed that Brown & Roberts Hardware Store, one of Brattleboro's longest-run family businesses, will soon be changing hands. The Putnam family has owned Brown & Roberts for over 40 years, but the store's history goes all the way back to the early 1900s, when there were two hardware stores in town, one owned by Brown and the other owned by the Roberts. 
The two stars eventually joined forces in 1964, becoming Brown and Roberts, and was located in the Brooks House building. In 1970, a man named Bernard Putnam bought the store. In 1975, Putnam and his partner Neil moved the store up to the street where the Putnam family and their friendly staff have been dedicated to helping the people of Brattleboro ever since. I know what you're thinking. GMO stands for Gory Movie Organization. Silence! But no, it stands for Genetically Modified Organisms. A local legislator and a public advocacy organization are teaming up to draw attention to what might be in our food. Let's hand it over to Ray and Jonah to learn more. GMOs are made from combining DNA from two different organisms. The Berg Vermont Public Interest Research Groups has been making a large effort to force GMO labeling all through Wyndham County. I'm Jonah Bingham and I'm from BCTV Young Newsmakers and we're at the co-op to interview Rebecca White from Vermont Public Interest Research Groups. My thoughts are that genetically modified food should be labeled so people can have a choice when they decide what foods they want to eat, if they want to eat them or if they don't want to eat them. GMOs are found in three quarters of all foods sold on store shelves, so it's probable that 90% of people who want it labeled maybe half the time purchase something that they don't want to purchase. So I am Ray Kimuda from BCTV's Young Newsmakers and we, we asked Rebecca why she thought that GMO labeling was so important and she said that 90% of the Brattleboro um, people want GMO labeling. So what are you doing now with the postcards? Oh, well with the postcards, VPIRG people sign them like this is one of our postcards and we send it to a county senator for your county and that gets delivered to the senator when they're in session and then they see that and say oh you know you know Joe Smith really likes this I should probably think about my constituents or my voters so yeah. How do you think that it will affect on Brattleboro? Oh well with the co-op you can see the co-op is really for having labeling of GMOs but, but there's, there's lots of farms here who are organic farms so this is another way for them to be able to get customers because certain people don't want to eat GMO foods and if they can have a label that says they don't want GMO foods and people purchase that, that's a whole other market. So I think it'll have a really positive effect. Thank you Jonah and Ray for that story. Our next story is about the Wednesday Downtown Farmers Market. Let's turn it over to our four reporters for, for coverage down there. Hello, and I'm Amelia Conley. I am at the farm Wednesday Farmers Market. What brings you to the farmers market? Name to look for some fruits and vegetables and maybe some bread. This is a gorgeous day, and we have lots of nice flowers to sell and excited people. Are these all of your ranges of flowers? Yes, we grow flowers and berries, and we make maple syrup. The youth part work in the project. Well, it teaches not only farming, but uh, it teaches you workplace skills and uh, all that good stuff. Today I'm here with Maggie Stoltzman. What are you selling here? Um, well, our farm's name is Hermit Thrash Homestead, and we're selling mixed vegetables. We sell some eggs, but we only have about 25 chickens, so they tend to go fast. Hey, come back now here, farmer market. Tired of those outdated roles, offended by their obsolescence, embarrassed by rough, scratchy surfaces. Wish you had another choice? It's time to retire that antique. Ditch that antiquated role and embrace the future of comfort. America is gaga for silky soft. So soft and so strong, there's nothing Silky Soft can't handle. New Silky Soft. Undeniably the greatest invention known to humankind. It's Silky Soft, worth its weight in gold. Don't be caught without your roll of Silky Soft. There are a thousand and one uses for Silky Soft. 
Get Silky Soft today, and you'll be saying, Hands off my Silky Soft. Hands off my Silky Soft. Even if the bathroom is shut down, you can go without a frown. Get Silky Soft. Some restrictions apply. Not available in all territories. Action! Wait, I wasn't ready. Just go. The sneeze! The sneeze! Feel the scent. Now, for our first lucky volunteers, they will tell us how they like it on the scent. Interesting uh, and unique odor. Ah, uh, <clears throat> I mean, oh, wow, that's just great stuff I'm used in my house. Oh, God, that's terrible. What is it? <coughs> Somebody call 911. Wait, shoot. The sneeze. Feel the scent. The sneeze. Feel the scent. For external use only. It's the Boys and Girls Club. Where boys and girls have fun. Not the most creative name, but it works. Now, turning to the reporters who have interviewed some employees and a camper. I like working with young people and I wanted to help young people and be better people and learn good things, so that's why I started working here. How long have you worked here? Um, almost nine years. Wow, that's a long time. Thanks. Our next story is about a kitchen. A humble kitchen. Not just any humble kitchen, the humble kitchen. Now to James, who takes a closer look at some tasty street foods. The Humble Kitchen has modeled itself a popular Vietnamese street food and has recently relocated to Flat Street. We caught up with co-owners James Smith and Amy Gallant to learn more. How many customers would you say of an average come here every day? Well, that's a tough question. We do a pretty big lunch business. Um, I can't say exactly how many, but um, uh, quite a few. Quite a few. What is your most popular dish? Mm, I think it's probably the grilled chicken sandwich or the pork belly noodle bowl. What days are you open? We are open 11 to 3 every day except Sunday. Okay, thank you for your time. You're now for the weekly sports update. Take it away, Ray and Jonah. Welcome to the sports piece of BCTV News. Now for baseball. The Indians pitcher Danny Salazar shut down the Blue Jays. Cleveland Indians beat Blue Jays 4-2. In the Sox versus Mariners game, the Sox came on top. The score was 7-8. Daniel Nava on the Sox had an RBI single that won the game. We've been seeing some strange weather patterns lately. Since he knows nothing about this and I don't feel like talking, we'll let the weather people tell you more about this. Hello, 
I'm Caden Leary here for BCTV's Young Newsmakers, here with the Brattle Roll Area Weekend Forecast. As you can see, the worst of the storm is a little north of here, but we do still have a few storm clouds in our area. So if you have an umbrella, that's great, but the people over there might need a little more. And I'm Bella, here today with your Weekend Forecast. Tomorrow we will have a high of 83 and a low of 62, with a 30% chance of scattered thunderstorms. And that's news to us. Uh, next week, I'll be on a super secret mission, uh, and somebody will be filling in for me. Stay classy, Vermont. Telepathic. High, High five. five. Did it again. I'm James, here with Caden Leary. Caden Leary is famous for? Well, I started as a role in Time Travel Trio as a clown henchman, and ever since then, I've been pretty much the biggest thing since Justin Bieber. How many fans swarm you every day? Uh, it's hard to count, but I'd estimate about 400,000. The only thing I don't really like about being famous is that it takes away time from my true passion, kangaroo farming. Don't they just jump out of their pens? Well, um, we have like 50 foot tall electric fences. What do you feed them? I feed them kangaroo kibble.